Welcome, here is the dry run for you. Probate and estate property transactions. This is take one, there will be quite a few more takes <laughs> before we do this live. But yeah, it's gonna be great. So here we go. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm uh, Scott Jensen and uh, and I'm not going to give you a 15 minute talk on my accomplishments like a lot of webinars uh, that we attend or get too long winded is this is really about you and your clients, uh, not me. I do want to put a little credibility and history your way just for a couple of minutes here at the beginning. So you have a history of how my team, you know, here today uh, was formed and why. Um, and that's not advancing. There we go. Uh, 2014, I left corporate America to make a retirement plan to become financially independent. I was paid well, but never knew um, I'd. Uh, uh, but but I just never knew that I, I'd get to the financially independent spot uh, in the current job. And I will make sure this is a lot smoother. <laughs> I've always led with a service heart, though, so uh, you know, real estate just felt natural. I started partnering with uh, people in foreclosure in 2014. I would invest X amount of dollars into their home to get it ready for market. And uh, then uh, I had a realtor friend of mine that I would use and we would get it sold before the auction date. Everything was going well enough. So I quit that corporate job. Problem was in late 2014, 2015, as you know, the market started to appreciate like crazy and house flippers were starving. Scound, uh, scrounging for any property that they could. Uh, anyone who had an NED, a notice of election and demand filed on their home to start the foreclosure process, started to receive upwards of, you know, 100 letters and postcards from these investors looking for a deal. I was stuck right in the middle of the rat's nest. And uh, even though I had an amazing system to, uh, to help them out, I was stuck right there. I was probably analyzing 20 or more homes a week, trying to get anything to work financially. So uh, that's where I got really good at comping out houses and looking for equity in renovations. Um, this right here is your first golden nugget of the day or this class. Dig into the MLS, start comping everything out, grab a neighborhood uh, and just really get to know it. Then run the study, look for a home that was bought and sold within a year a flip and so what i so so what did it look like before what did it look like after what did it sell for first and then what did it sell for after it was remodeled then go around and look at uh, distress home on the mls look at the comps in the neighborhood think if we did this or if we did that to this home in that neighborhood what would it be worth then Trust me, you'll become an expert to maximize the sale price for uh, for your clients. Uh, well, I was able to be service uh, of service to a few, um, kept the lights on barely, um, and did some development and quite a few renovations for myself. Did some investing. Really, just became pretty diversified in my knowledge of uh, of real estate. Then it was 2018 and I decided to get my license thinking about the appreciating market, uh, thinking about traditional real estate and coaching my clients and uh, how to get the most equity they can. That would be the best way that I could be of service. So January 2019, I took the test. About six months later, I met Joe Elio when I was forming a BNI group. Joe came on as the estate attorney and he passed an estate that he had uh, along to me to get it sold and just see what I could do with it. So I comped it out. We walked the home, looked around. Well, I walked the home, looked around, called Joe back. I said, Joe, we got to flip this. Now, it's definitely not the same terminology or the th same thing you're thinking about when I say flip this. Here's how it all went. Just like when I partnered with those in foreclosure back in 2014, I partnered with Joe and the personal representative of this home. I went in and we discussed how we could renovate the home to bring it to the maximum value in conjunction with the comparables in the neighborhood there. Our goal would be if we dropped 5,000 in renovations, we would see a $10,000 increase in price, basically a two to one scale. Now studying the comparables, we decided to gut pretty much the whole entire house. We kept one toilet, one sink, and the uh, cabinets and counters. Uh, the rest went. Uh, one sink and um, 
Um, so hardwoods were refinished, uh, tile redone, carpet, paint, appliances, roof, water, heater, uh, some drywall, light fixtures, on and on. Everything except for the one toilet, one sink, and the uh, counters and, uh, and cabinets. We spent just under $30,000. The comparable showed if we did nothing to the home, we could list for about 300000 If we gutted it, and when you're listing it at 300,000, you're only gonna get X amount of buyers because really you're just gonna get a lot of investors more than you're gonna get a lot of owner occupants. And those investors are trying to get it on the cheap and they're gonna you know, offer you 240,000 instead of the 300. So we came to the conclusion if we gutted it, we could get 365,000, basically more than a two to one scale on this. So put 30,000 in, we're planning on a return of 35 and the job took about five weeks and we listed. The market wasn't quite as hot then, so we sold it for the list price of 365. Yeah, I know, just list. The contractors made a great wage to finish though. The project manager, uh, he made a great, uh, great wage to facilitate. I made a 3.2% commission, so I did well. The homeowner cashed in on an additional, or the estate, cashed in on an additional $35,000 at closing. Joe Elio looked like a rock star and was paid for his services to close the estate as well. Everyone won, like really won. So Joe and I, we did another one. Much smaller renovation as the neighborhood of this home didn't support a full gut like the first. Same result, however. We did a very deep clean touched up some drywall, power washed the exterior, and spent about $7,200 to get it ready for market. The analysis showed we could sell uh, the home for $240,000 if we basically did nothing, and $265,000 if we spent the $7,200, almost a three to one scale. So after renovating uh, to the top of the neighborhoods, um, late, uh, so after renovating, to the top of the neighborhoods looking at uh, to the top of the neighborhood looking at the comps we ended up selling for two hundred and seventy thousand dollars instead of 265 uh list price uh for for a couple of reasons first off basically because i'm very conservative in my estimations but mostly because we went live march 2020. now uh do you remember what happened on uh march 2020 in, I gotta I gotta write that down. March twenty twenty. Sorry, there was an extra slide in there. I gotta I gotta get rid of that. Um, so you remember what happened March twenty twenty? In person showings were shut down, and they were shut down the weekend that we went live. So because I never take no for an answer, and I'm sure not gonna wait for showings to come back. I learned that we could do virtual showings. So I've got a pretty heavy video and graphics history. So I immediately got out my camera uh, when we couldn't do the in-person showings. I put together a very dry 35 minute video of the home, but I shot it like I was showing the home to a client, showing all the corners, every wall, every ceiling, every light fixture, switch, you get the idea. I then put um, together a separate highlight package with music and voiceover that was just under five minutes and also put together one that was just kind of high impact sports video style that was about a minute 30 on the home. I sent it everywhere, promoted the links. I, I even promoted them on the MLS. If you remember, you could make an offer, but nobody could go into the home until they were under contract. There was also a push to get something under contract by the agents and buyers themselves as no one knew what the future was gonna hold here. So I quickly received two very strong offers sight unseen, well, I guess video seen, um, and we were under contract within four days. I took the top offer and uh, their clients went in after we were under contract. Um, they just decided it was too much work for them and they terminated. So the next offer we had stuck until the closing ta table, however. So we sold the home for $270,000. We put in $7,200 and returned a $25,000 profit for the estate or the personal representative. Our objective will always be to act as an extension 
of the client to minimize their risk and maximize their solution to provide quality decisions in good faith and consciousness. That's what I stress you do as well. Uh, I'm not going to bring up the cream of the crop because though, or, or I'm not just bringing up the cream of the crop of, uh, of projects. Um, these were actually the first two that we did. And I can go on and on with what we've done since. Every home we have done has produced a two to one return or more on the renovations that we decided to do. That's why it's so important for you to know your numbers and have spreadsheets to produce accurate results. Now, it's not brain surgery or anything that we invented. We just analyzed all aspects of the home to find a maximum return for the homeowner, just like agents have done for years. The difference is we have the people in place who can execute the agreed upon tasks efficiently and effectively. We assess, manage, renovate, list, and close so the bills stop for the PR. Sorry, I, I had that twice. So that's a good point here. When the PR takes over, so the bills stop for the PR. Okay, I'll figure that area out. So it's a good point. When the PR takes over, they also get all the bills associated with it. Sometimes there's no money in the estate except the house. Literally, they are paying out of pocket to keep this home from incurring late fees and falling into uh, foreclosure. So this brings up the question, can you sell your home while in probate or immediately after the person on title passes away? Absolutely. Sometimes it'll take a year or more to close a probate case and no one can or wants to wait to sell the house waiting for probate to wrap up. Um, you'll need to get the letters of testamentary, testamentary, thank you, but Joe can help you with that, uh, then sell the home uh, to stop the bills. If it's in probate, the proceeds of the sale will go to an estate bank account for distributions to creditors and heirs uh, after probate is final. So how does this help you? If you end up with a client who is a personal representative like this super rock star guy here, uh, or an heir, you can take this information and maximize the sale of their home or just get it sold to stop the bills from piling up because you can sell the home even though probate is not closed. You will want to talk to Joe on that because there's always a what if case scenario. And Joe can talk about that here in a little bit. Um, if you're not comfortable with all the analysis, renovations, legalities, you can refer the client to us uh, for a 25% referral fee, you know, just like any other referral um, that would be done. My commission is 3.2 to 3.5% for these type of transactions. So you're 25%, you know, a decent check. I charge the 3.2 to 3.5 because there's just a lot more work to do than a standard listing in uh, something like this. So by referring, you also get my project manager. Uh, now, if you're asking, asking yourself, I wonder if I could borrow Scott's project manager for my clients. Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> Sorry, our partnership is just that. We analyze and complete these projects as a team. So if you decide to do this yourself, uh, be as thorough in your inspections as you absolutely can. Make sure you inspect all the major system components you can even bring in an, an inspector. Uh, pay, let's see, 48. Okay, noticing that you have an old Federal Pacific electrical panel that's not, uh, that's not on the to-do list can, oh, okay, so, 
So noticing that you have a Federal Pacific uh, electrical panel that's not on the to-do list can create problems in the uh, inspection when listing. They're not cheap to replace. Uh, I got to reword 49. Okay. Um, also, please inspect the roof. <laughs> Why do I say this? I got bit by an electrical panel for about four grand on one home, and I made the mistake of not getting the roof immediately evaluated at the analysis on another home. And I had a $10,000 oops. So both homes were able to absorb the situation. And uh, I, I mean, I try to be very thorough, but uh, nothing teaches like experience, right? Right. Now, um, you need to be careful as a real estate broker also. Dora does not think too kindly of those agents that wear too many hats. For example, if you're analyzing, renovating, paying yourself a project management fee, paying the subcontractors to do the work, listing the home, negotiating the final sales price, and closing it, giving the seller whatever is left over, you have way too much control and can manipulate the final aspects of the process too much for Dora's liking. It could end up very bad. So you need to develop and put together a team in place uh, to correctly handle all the aspects of the process. Uh, speaking of team members, I've known Brent, my project manager, for over 15 years. I met him at my church. We became Starsky and Hutch <laughs> almost immediately. Uh, he was a former custom home builder remodeler in the Castle Pines Village uh, and at Eagle Ridge Park housing development just by the Hogback and Golden, uh, you know, other places as well. But those were the two cream of the crops. Um, if you know, you know where the uh, um, Eagle Ridge uh, Park is there behind Golden. Um, he's uh, also got his master's in marketing and is just an overall awesome dude. Um, I have him here today on the Zoom to chat about managing the project and basically what's all involved, what to look out for, and uh, how to find success doing this. I'm gonna hand it over to Brent right now here for a couple of minutes, let him discuss the process through the eyes of a project manager. Brent, take it away. This is Brent, this is Brent, hello, blah, blah, blah. okay. Thanks, Brent. <laughs> I could not do any of this without Brent. I, I mean, number one, he is he's just someone I trust completely and does an amazing job. Uh, having someone you can trust in this position is just super key. Second, legally, I can't project manage it. So I need someone like Brent who's amazing in, av in every aspect, just like him. So with this being said, the most important part of the whole process is to make sure that it's done legally right. Closing an estate can be very overwhelming to your clients. Um, having a great estate attorney on your side is uh, super important. Uh, simple things like getting the letters of testamentary, um, understanding uh, if this is testate or intestate, um, you know, to the more complicated things like getting all to agree on what to do with the stuff. And uh, um, uh, well, what to do with the stuff so that you can stage and list. Now, if you have questions or need a great estate attorney for yourself or a client of yours, please call Mr. Joe Elio. Use him and abuse him. He's among the best in the business and will represent you and your clients to the highest of levels. Yes, you can hire him for yourself and your clients. Remember, our broker's license gives us the ability to help people buy and sell real property. When it comes to legal issues, in estates or elsewhere in our real estate walk, having a legal expert on aisle on auto dial for me is just a must. Mr. Elio is uh, going to chat for a couple of minutes now about the estate and probate world from a legal point of view, some of the things to look out for and to make sure you have an understanding of. Most importantly, um, that you're just well re re represented. Mr. Joe Elio, take it away. <laughs> it's not what you sound like, but anyways. Thanks, Joe. 90% of anything is just having the right people in place. Uh, side note, the builder that I partner with, I trust 100%, and we do very well in the new builds. Brent, Mr. Elio, 
uh, and I trust each other 100% the same. I know they have my best interest and I've got their best interest as well. Um, that relationship is what you're looking for to, uh, uh, to pull, this, uh, pull this stuff off. So here are some must do's. Depending upon your model, make sure your project manager has a very tight renovation agreement. Uh, Joe can help you out with this. The home will be sold after renovations. It has to be, especially if you're investing money into this. Having all down on paper, so if there is any discrepancy, you can look back on what you've agreed on to find a quick resolve. Uh, you have to close this, and you don't want any conflict with the seller, and you especially don't want the seller to love the remodel and want to move back in and not sell, especially when money's been invested into the remodel. So I didn't need to insert that before. Um, <laughs> you will need comparables for your project manager. Uh, you'll need to supply a budget with detailed renovation costs to whatever level the client feels is correct. And uh, a renovation contract again, uh, or agreement. Then you will need to prepare all of the real estate docs as usual like the uh, exclusive right to sell, seller's advisory, maybe a definitions of working relationship, basically whatever your managing broker may want. You'll wanna get a seller property disclosure if the uh, personal representative has knowledge of the home. If they don't, make sure that you put that in the MLS um, uh, that there will not be a seller's property disclosure. Make sure you disclose that this is an estate and when submitting offers, they need to check personal representative's deed on the offer. Um, this will make it to where you, you know, won't have to counter or amend at a later date. Um, also be careful uh, representing both sides of these transactions. Uh, once again, just too many hats can create problems for you and Dora uh, regulations. Um, all it takes is one, as you know, all it takes is one cranky person to make life uncomfortable when, uh, when a call is received from Dora. Just protect yourself from this. Um, I'm sure you know lots of friends that are, that are agents that you can refer the, uh, uh, the buyer to. Um, now, if the estate is dry, basically without capital, uh, Brent can invest in renovations if needed to update the home for, uh, for market. Brent is not a licensed real estate broker, so he can do this. You can't. Once again, too many hats. Um, questions about that, talk to, uh, talk to Mr. Elio. Uh, Brent charges uh, an interest rate to do this, however, most times around 8%. It's a good return, but really pretty minimal for the client. 8% of $30,000 invested for two months is only 400 bucks. So make sure um, that if you're going to, uh, to invest in the property, make sure that you put a lien on the property. Um, super, super important. If something goes sour, uh, you want to be able to get your money back. This is almost maybe, well, I don't know. They're probably about just as important, but pull an O&E and open the full title commitment right after the documents are signed for the project. My title company never charges me for the title commitment because they know it's going to close. And, uh, you know, it's a document that's going to be needed to, uh, to close title anyways. So a quick story on the title work here. A few months ago, a different attorney, sorry, Joe, not cheating on you. <laughs> different attorney gave Brent and I an estate to sell. Uh, this estate definitely had some challenges and without going into too many details per client confidentiality, one of the things that happened when I pulled the O&E was there were two liens on the home. One was, you know, the primary mortgage, but the second one was, was really a bizarre lien. Um, it looked like a private money loan as the uh, term was only one year. Looking at the two liens, uh, the home was upside down. Uh, I spoke with the personal representative about the liens and uh, how they looked legit. So I told him I wasn't too sure that, uh, uh, that I could really do anything for him. But because I can't and won't take no for an answer. <laughs> and the second lien was just too bizarre for me. Um, I did a little bit of, uh, of, of investigation. Through some, uh, through some research, I found 
um, who I thought might be the lender on the second lien, uh, actually on LinkedIn. I went ahead and uh, instant, instant messaged them through LinkedIn thinking it was a long shot, but about 30 minutes later, I got a reply. Uh, we scheduled a call for the uh, lender and myself, and the lender told me that there was a broker and, you know, the lendee or the homeowner, basically the now deceased. So you've got the lender, you've got the broker uh, facilitating the loan and the lendee or the homeowner, the, uh, uh, the, the now deceased. Okay, those three people. The lender said this was a one year hard money loan for some renovations. The broker told the lender everything was good and everything was ready. So the lender gave the money to the broker to deliver to the lendee and he went ahead and filed the lien. Money's been transferred, filed the deed of trust. Come to find out the lendee, the homeowner, decided after talking to his dad that he didn't want to take the loan. So instead of the broker returning the money to the lender, the broker kept it. I was absolutely beside myself when I was talking to this guy about this. The lender found out um, when, 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 I got to reword that, 78, 78. So when the lender found out about this, uh, uh, so, so the lender found out about this but couldn't get the money back from the broker. So he left the deed of trust filed on the home which is very illegal, hoping someday that the home would sell and he could get his money back through the home. Problem is the home or the lendee never received the money. So I called the attorney that gave us this estate and they referred me to a, uh, to a litigator. I shared all with the litigator and the lender ultimately had to remove the lien as the money was never delivered to the Lindy and there was going to be some charges pressed if he didn't. So he did remove the lien. I share this story because projects like this take a little bit more thought and a little bit more creativity, hence the 3.2% or the 3.5% commission. Remember, just when things look impassable, a little investigation never hurts. What was upside down netted the estate over $41,000. So what they were uh, thinking the bank was just going to take by hiring us turned out to really help the family with all the uh, final expenses. I think what, uh, what drives me most about this aspect of real estate is when I get done with an estate and all is closed, it seems like every time I'm sitting back in my chair saying that was really great. Nothing makes me feel more of service, more there for my community. Um, than helping people in, uh, in these situations. Um, you know, Jackie and I, we were uh, discussing some things last week and she was talking about a client who wanted to prepare for uh, an easy probate situation. Um, have your clients reach out to Mr. Elio. He can set them up for an easy estate closing and uh, uh, just get this stuff, uh, stuff preempted for, uh, uh, for your um, older clients. So Mr. Brent, or so Brent, <laughs> I've got kids, we call him Mr. Brent. So Brent, Mr. Elio, we'll call him Mr. Elio. And I continue to grow uh, in this aspect of real estate, leading with a uh, giving step. I hope you were able to, I hope we were able to share um, an aspect of real estate that might help you and your clients. And if you ever need anything from us, you know, just reach out. I'm going to open it up for uh, questions for uh, Brent, Mr. Elio, or myself. And uh, um, yeah, if you guys have anything at all to ask. 85. Um, um, blah, 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 questions. And then um, thanks for being here today. Write down our numbers if something pops up and we can be of service. Uh, please reach out. Have a great day. So that's really my first time going through this on a uh, PowerPoint. I wanted to get this over to you guys. 
I'm going to reword this a little bit more directed towards them. I think it's worded just a little bit more directed towards me and us. Uh, I think I'm going to throw in there, you know, you should write this down or, um, you know, helping your estate clients. Or I think I'm just going to direct this just a little bit more towards them because it is a class. Um, they are here for education. They're not here to, uh, uh, to hear, uh, um, you know, my life story. Um, so I'm going to twist this a little bit, you know, um, towards them just after going through this, but that is the nuts and bolts. So, uh, so you guys, uh, have an idea of, you know, what's going to be said and, uh, what to input in your sections. Okay. All right. Thanks. You guys have yourself a phenomenal day. Later.